Okay, good evening, leaders. Good evening. Yeah, karibuni sana. I'll uh, welcome Reverend Beth just to start off the meeting. Good evening. Good evening. And praise the Lord. We want to thank God for today. We are here together again, yet to learn once more, to hear what the Lord has for us this day. Today, the 10th of September, the Lord has something for each one of us to learn. And so I'd like us to start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this is the day that Lord has made. We may rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. As we start our lesson, Jehovah God, we want to thank you and to bless you, Jehovah God, because we believe as we redefine success and uh, as we redefine leadership, oh Jehovah God, I want to thank you that, Father, there is a lot we shall learn, oh Jehovah God. We thank you, Father, this day that as, as we leave the class today, Jehovah God, may you help us even as we lead your people, God. We want to thank you and to bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I don't know whether there's, uh, there's maybe anyone who has never introduced himself or herself. Maybe there's a new student. Uh, could there be one? Can I choose just one to say hi to us? Allow me. Uh, angalau salamu. Tujue umeshinda aje. Uh, okay. Reverend Kahindi, salimia wa shirika. Wanafunzi. Washirika ni kama ni kanisa. Just say hi to the people. Good evening, leaders. How are you? I'm excited to be here this evening and uh, glad to see the faces that I can see and the names that are uh, coming up here. Uh, we expect today to have uh, a very exciting session. Now that we need to redefine leadership, I don't know what that one means, but before the end of the day, we will be all knowledgeable. So, um, my need is to say I'm glad to be here, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to say hi. Yes, Reverend. Thank you. Uh, the, since you're a facilitator, baby. Okay, can I say uh, maybe Collins Asalimiyawatu? Collins. Collins to Fadali. Unmute. Uh, Sidani Ananiskia. Anyway, thank you for coming this day. Today we are redefining. You know, when I was praying, I said success. <laughs> There's a book I read, Redefining Success. So I think it was in my, <laughs> in my mind, redefining success. Anyway, we are redefining leadership. I know there's what you know, who is a leader, the there's a definition that you have in your mind uh, when it comes to leadership. Just try to share that somewhere. Today, we want to redefine leadership from, that you see leadership from, from within, who I am, what I'm expected to be, what I'm expected, it is not just uh, as we've read in books, but for today, just imagine you had not had it. So that even as it is defined, then you learn something new. I believe you learn something new. So God bless you as you listen. May God give you the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom as you learn this day. So thank you, even as I introduce our facilitator, the chairman. Yeah, our facilitator, Joseph Carey, I'm the chairman. God bless you as you take us through. 
God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Beth. And uh, leaders, we are so happy for the privilege to host you again. Today, as Reverend has said, it is more of a, an intrinsic journey. So whatever we'll be discussing, uh, let the focus be on you as a leader. Uh, as, we say, as we started, we started by saying, uh, we are exposing ourselves and uh, we are coming on board with a very open mind uh, to learn, and learn, relearn, and uh, adapt. And I think uh, we all have a definition of leadership in one way or another, but uh, we're going to take a journey. We're going to take a journey of uh, understanding leadership. We look at various, uh, various leaders and how they looked at this subject. But in all this, I trust that your notebook is it's close to you or your iPad or whatever you, have, you will be writing, just look at what is in sync with you as we discuss this topic. So think about the topic, but also be thinking more of uh, internal about yourself. Uh, it's, it will be a, a topic that will really focus on you, yourself, and uh, probably will handle one topic and then we'll handle another one, even if it's not the whole of it. But uh, it's going to be an exciting journey, so I trust we are all ready. I can see today we have a, uh, okay, let me also just, Penina, can you say hi? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, you can uh, greet us and tell us how to recognize. We have seen there's a lot of floods uh, in uh, Calacol. Are you safe where you are and how is the situation? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Lord, is good? We thank God everything is okay, apart from electricity that is overflowing. But all of us are safe and we thank God for that. I'm happy to join the class again. I've missed two, two sessions. I was not feeling well, but I thank God I'm okay now. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Penina. Uh, let me also invite uh, Pastor Fidel from uh, Rwanda just to say hi. Uh, Pastor Fidel, kindly say hi to the team. Uh, kindly unmute Pastor Fidel and say hi. Uh, we can't hear you. Kindly unmute. Okay, I think uh, I'll get back to, to you later on as we continue. Okay, so let's uh, get into the topic for today's topic. We are talking about redefining leadership. We are in level two, uh, intermediary leadership. And uh, lesson 10, we are talking about redefining leadership. So I encourage you to continue using the chat. Uh, if something comes up and you feel this is my takeaway, uh, be generous enough and uh, share it with, uh, with us so that we can also be able to, uh, to, to, to be able to see and benefit from what you are capturing. And as we get to this topic, let me ask, start by this question, asking this question, who would you, who would you be willing to follow? Who would you be willing to follow as a leader? Yeah, if you are to choose to follow someone or to follow a leader, which kind of a leader would you be willing to follow? Uh, maybe a specific quality, uh, maybe a skill, 
Uh, it can be diverse based on what we have gone through. I just want you to think of maybe one quality or one skill, uh, whatever you may want to call it. Uh, this is the kind of a, a leader that I will want to follow with this uh, particular quality. So just share one, two or three uh, as we look at what you are sharing. Who would you be willing to follow as a leader? Okay, so let me see. I can see already there are some text coming. Ah, influential leader. Yeah, thank you, Anne. Uh, hey, a person of integrity, uh, Reverend Kahindi. One with clear vision and ability to inspire. Thank you, Pastor Chege. Uh -huh. Oh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, yeah. Collins is very specific uh, on the person, Nelson Mandela. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh -huh. well, person of wisdom, person of wisdom, visionary, uh, Nelson. Uh -huh. Let me pick uh, probably one more. Uh -huh. One with integrity and a leader of character. I think you guys, you, 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 you have a clue or you have... You have a clue of what we are talking about today. These are all the qualities that we shall be looking at. Uh, Pastor Fidel talks about positive, a, pastor, a leader with, who has a positive attitude. Uh, one who leads by example. One who models the way. Uh, these are really exciting uh, uh, input. Okay. So uh, keep on sharing. And here we are. So in this lesson, we are going to examine Actually, I'm going to take, take you through a journey of uh, definitions of leadership. We have studied a lot of leadership. Uh, we have looked at a lot of definitions as we tried to see what marries to this course, what brings the essence of the purpose we are talking about, purpose-driven leader, what marries into what we are focusing on, issues of vision, visionary leadership, and therefore, every definition will bring something, uh, probably a new concept, a new quality. And at the end of it, we'll have a summary as we look at this. And uh, this will be a mirror. You will be looking at it and you'll be looking at yourself and see what new am I, what new quality is it coming out clear and which I need to develop uh, as we take the journey. So let's start the first. Uh, the first definition or the first aspect that we're going to look at, we have tried to, we looked at and categorized all this definition to 10 categories. And the first one, leadership is first personal discovery and personal manifestation. Becoming yourself and releasing yourself. And uh, all these concepts that we have crafted are supported by some of uh, definitions of leadership. So we'll be, uh, we'll, we'll be going deeper into those definitions of leadership. Uh, maybe not too many, but one or two. So the first thing we have, we are, as we redefine leadership, we are focusing on or we are re-echoing uh, the, the, the aspect that leadership is first personal. Uh, remember the pyramid, leadership pyramid, starting from self-leadership down there. So it's first personal discovery. Uh, last time, uh, lesson in lesson four or three, we did a SWOT analysis, and that was to really uh, un unveil uh, or th the, your potential, your your strength. Just trying to understand yourself more. So first, personal discovery, and then you, once you discover, you manifest, becoming yourself and releasing yourself. So, uh, Professor Dr. Mohammed. He defined leadership as a function of knowing yourself, having a vision that is well communicated, building trust among colleagues, and taking effective action to realize your own potential. Okay, so the first thing that comes out with this definition is function of understanding yourself. And it's through understanding yourself that you now proceed to the next level of crafting a vision and communicating the vision and also building trust. 
uh, taking effective action to realize your own potential and to release your own potential. So that is uh, what anchors to the first the, the, the first aspect of uh, defining leadership. Uh, another another concept or another quote: the most effective way to lead is to lead from within. Is to lead from within. I can't govern others if I cannot govern myself, and therefore, and I can't uh, lead unless I've been able to explore uh, that potential and that awareness of who I am and uh, what I can be able to offer. Now, still the same, and still, still the same. The first uh, aspect there, we look at uh, Warren Bennis. Warren Bennis is one of the renowned uh, leaders. He wrote a book. Uh, titled Becoming a Leader. And uh, he says, no leader sets out to be a leader. What people do, they set out to live their lives expressing themselves fully. And when that expression is of value, they become leaders. When people see value in a person, the person who is expressing themselves, then they become people of value. So the point is not be to become a leader, the point is to become yourself to use yourself completely, all your skills, gifts, and energies in order to make your vision manifest. You must withhold nothing. You must, in some, become the person you started out to be and to enjoy the process of becoming. So a uh, very important issue is living your life and expressing your, yourself. That uniqueness of who I am, uh, uh, developing and and uh, and refining it and uh, and just bringing it out in terms of value that leads us or takes us to the arena of leadership in the uh, uh, in the first aspect that we are still looking at number two leadership is servanthood and I think this has this is quite a common statement uh, it's always mentioned here and there. And this focuses on natural sensation that one is obliged to serve, to serve first. It's about serving. So the servant leader is servant first. You serve until you become or you influence people. And when you influence them, you, then you, they are able to uh, join with you and work together with you. I remember Mother Teresa used to say, uh, love until it hurts. Yeah, you love until it hurts. You serve until it hurts in a way. And people feel that this is the person they want to be associated with. So it's servant first. It begins with a natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first. Then conscious choice brings one to aspire to lead. That person is sharply different from one who is leader first. So you look at one, uh, one, uh, one side of a person who is a leader first and then he learns to be a servant and a person who is a servant to, to leadership. You serve your way to leadership. And these are true leaders that are really driven by, uh, by serving the community or serving the people. Uh -huh. Under servant, uh, servanthood, a very common statement by JFK, John F. Kennedy. He said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And I think this is really important, uh, especially at this moment that we are in. There's so much going around us and uh, we are tempted to probably join the majority and, and critique, uh, probably without solid actions. Uh, but I think I'm happy that just sitting down and discussing these concepts is a drop in the ocean because we are preparing ourselves. We never know. We never know who we shall equip. And uh, maybe this network might end up becoming a change that will bring a revolution or a shift in some of the organization and uh, probably even at the higher level. We, if, uh, we have people here who are serving in government, we have people who are in private sector, we have people who are in uh, non-profit non organizations. So we never know. But I think that just doing the little you are, you are able to do, you, we are 
focusing on what can we do in this particular period. And this can be the initial stages, the initial steps that might usher as to bigger, uh, to bigger moves that can follow. So J.F. Kennedy really pointed this out very strongly. It's not just about what can the country do, but we are also obliged to ask ourselves, as you can see in my second statement there, and this is my own, ask not what others can do for you, but ask what you can do for others. There are times we look so much on ourselves, but I, uh, the leadership concept or the leadership aspects comes with a lot of outward looking. We look in, we bring out what we have, and then we serve it out. James Stroke said, everyone can lead because everyone can serve. It's about servanthood. Uh, the third aspect, leadership is a lifestyle. Leadership is a lifestyle. We always insist this, when you become a leader, uh, you are a leader full time. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, issues when it, it comes to the political class, uh, where people uh, or some leaders are able to uh, to defend themselves if they are caught in a uh, in some scandal or some unfamiliar ground. Uh, they were on private on private uh, time. But I think as a leader, the moment you become a leader, you put on this cap, then it's there with you everywhere. So it's a lifestyle. Leadership is everyone's daily business. It's a daily thing. Wherever you are, you stand out to be to be a leader. So leadership permeates, it infuses our lives, a leader's lifestyle, and is manifested in the actions, beliefs, values, and attitudes of a leader. So leadership is everyone's business and is highly learnable skills. It is the person, not the title, that creates real leaders. So leadership is a lifestyle. The life that you lead can become the source of influence to other people and they can be able to probably follow you or connect with you. For the leadership is positioning and empowering others to function better and maximize the impact. It's about positioning and empowering others to function better and maximize the impact. One is small, it is too small to make a significant change. Uh, but when we compound and combine uh, and, uh, and multiply uh, the impact uh, through building other leaders, then we can be able to move uh, a movement. Let me use that word today, movement. Because movements are, are driven by people who have inspired other people. People who have seen something that others feel they can sacrifice uh, for that cause and also maybe for their own uh, benefit in terms of what the leader is pushing, because it's all about the people. So it's about positioning and empowering others. Uh, let's look at uh, this quote from uh, lisahisha.com. Good leaders position themselves. Yeah, a good leader will position him or herself to, to lead, but great leaders, they position others, but ultimate leaders empower others. So we start by positioning ourselves to lead. Then we graduate and start positioning others to lead. And then we go higher and we now empower others. Not just position them, but empower others and grow them, equip them. So great leaders do not set out to be leaders. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, always about the goal. It's always about the impact. Why? Am I leading? So before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. Yeah. So empowering, positioning. As we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. This is Nelson Mandela. Uh, Collins, you mentioned uh, Nelson Mandela. Yeah. So. Uh, you look at, it's about how do, do we bring out more leaders? And uh, you see the, 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 the faces of how leaders graduate. We start by positioning ourselves. After positioning ourselves, then we start thinking now, 
uh, I think I need to position something, someone. I need to mentor someone. As you mentor, you feel you need to, probably you need to empower more, you need to grow more leaders. So that's how you know when you're graduating in this ladder of leadership. If you, at the lower level, we have leaders who are really looking at themselves. I'm here to serve, I'm here to just, just focusing. Yes, they are, they, they, they are effective, they are serving, they are, they, 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 are, uh, they are resourceful, but they haven't gone to the extent of now bringing others and positioning others to do what probably they are doing in their own style. Positioning others and empowering others, we continue to look at our, our own, Moe Kibaki. Yeah, this is what Moe Kibaki said. Leadership is a privilege to better the lives of others. It's not an opportunity to satisfy personal greed. Yeah, better the lives of others. Position them and, and empower them. Uh, finally, we have uh, Mark, John Maxwell. Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence. When you sit with a, a true leader, you will always feel inspired. You will always want for a second chance just to sit close to that leader because uh, they make you feel better in their presence. It's about making others feel better, making sure that the impact lasts in a leader's absence. So leaders become great, not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. I think this is very critical. Uh, this is very critical. Uh, leaders become great, not because of that power that they have, but how they use it so well to be able to empower others. That even in their absence, we still feel them. They are leaders, we shall feel them for a long time. And even generations to come, they will read about them and they will still feel as if these leaders are influencing them. Today, there are leaders who are influencing us. Yes, they were there, they went, but the influence, the impact, we still feel them. We still watch them. We still read about them. We still use their concepts and their principles. Why? Because they invested and probably they empowered others who are still running with the baton. Aha, uh -huh. still empowering. The, great, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He's the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. We, our hope is that uh, this network will help us to do greater things that an individual can be able to do. Because we believe that as we spread more and strengthen, uh, expand and strengthen the network, then we can be able to reach places that physically will not be able to reach. Today we have people who are in Somalia and maybe some of us will never land in Somalia. But since someone is there and uh, the network is there, that person can be able to do something and, and bring a change where he or she is. So leadership is unlocking people's potential to become better, unlocking people's potential. And as a leader, I think we try to, to always see more than others see even about themselves. Yeah, you might tell someone, something that he or she might be shocked, but you have observed something. We see more than uh, even people some themselves see. So as we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. That is Bill Gates. So leadership is about three things. Uh, by uh, Larry, president of Garfield Group. Three things, very important when it comes to leadership according to him. Listen, inspire, and empower. Listen, inspire, and empower. As a leader, listen, inspire, and empower. So leadership is the ability to recognize the special abilities and limitations of others, combined with the capacity to set each one into the job where he will be able to do his best about positioning. We talked about positioning and empowering, empowering the people we are leading. Uh, number five, leadership is influence. I think we have been talking about this through inspiration. You influence by inspiring. And inspiration is motivated by what? My passion. 
And that passion comes from what? A vision. Yeah, so uh, look at those uh, faces. The vision is there. The vision makes or generates passion, uh, it brings your life alive. Uh, and through the passion, then you become inspirational. And through be becoming inspirational, uh, then people are able to follow you because you look focused, you look like you know where you are going. You, you, your talks are not just of where we are, but it's of where we can, we can be able to reach. So, uh, it, and then through that, we are able to inspire. So let's look at a few, a few definitions from some leaders. Leadership is having a vision, sharing that vision, and inspiring others to support your vision while creating their own. I, th I think this is critical and uh, very, very important uh, so that we appreciate. Uh, at some point, people will work with you. They will serve with you in their, with, within the vision that you are serving. But at the same time, we'll be trying to observe uh, what is in them. And uh, at the right time, probably it comes out and it's able also to fly. And we are able also to empower them to be able to do what fulfill their purpose in life. So a man without a vision for his future always returns to his past. There are people when you sit down with them, they will never paint a picture of the future. But they will tell you a lot of good stories of the old, old days. Uh, old days are not bad, but we need to look at, at what is coming ahead. That is how we ignite hope in, uh, in people and uh, also we are able to keep on moving forward. Uh, effective leadership is providing the vision and motivation to a team so they can work together towards the same goal. And then understanding the talents, the temperaments of each individual and effectively motivating each person to contribute individually their best towards achieving the group goal, yeah? It's about influence that comes through those aspects that we have talked about. Influence, still talking about if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. This is another very simple yet very powerful definition of leadership. Uh, it doesn't come with those, uh, I think the only I I can see here is one, inspire. Uh, you remember the six eyes we talked about? So we can see one of them here. If your action inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. This is by John, uh, John Quincy Adams. So uh, leadership is the capacity to influence others through your inspiration. Motivated by a passion, generated by a vision, produced by a conviction, ignited by a purpose. This is by Miles Monroe. Uh, lead, a leader is one who sees more than others can see. I think I, I, I mentioned this, who sees further than others see and who sees before others see. And who sees people in a way that probably they have not even looked at themselves in that uh, perspective. You're able to see people in different uh, aspects and uh, be able to motivate them and inspire them, inspire them. Leadership is a privilege to produce more leaders. Uh, this is somehow connected with, the, with the, the other one that we talked about, empower, empowerment. But the function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not more followers. As they follow, you are building them to become a leader, to become leaders. Before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. And the function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not more followers. A leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. That is by John Maxwell. Uh, number seven, and as we look at some of the common elements in leadership, leadership is becoming your best at your craft becoming the best at your craft. Yeah, there are people who are, they, they are influential when they are in the field. Wherever they are, in terms of how they do things, they, 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 they influence others to be able to work with them or even bring out the best in them. Uh, Martin Luther, 
King Jr. If a, a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted, or Beth Vaughan composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great sweeper who did his job well. Uh, probably this is, a, this, this is a very heavy statement and uh, we look at it from, the, uh, from very different dimension from maybe if you are at family level, at your work environment, uh, uh, wherever you are, uh, can this statement apply? Uh, can there be a statement that can uh, be mentioned or is the work that I'm doing, can it be described in this uh, manner. And uh, Dr. Geoffrey Griffin, he said, if you are given a coffee cup to wash, wash it better than it has ever been washed. Yeah, mastery. When we become master, when we are dedicated, we are committed that whatever you are doing, you are doing it with self-supervision and, and, and until you feel you are satisfied, you are fulfilled, there is high level of discipline in what you are doing and you want to see the best, then that, that, all, that is another indicator of how leaders are, uh, how leaders are, are molded or how people become leaders. Uh, leadership is becoming an agent of hope. Uh, Napoleon, he said a leader is a dealer in hope. And I think this has been one of the statements that we have been repeating, especially during this period of COVID. We have been engaging with many leaders and one statement or one quality that we have been insisting on, be a dealer of hope. Let's not allow fear to dominate our life. Let's not allow fear to dominate in the lives of the people that we are leading. Let's build in the aspect of hope because sometimes without hope, you might be in a pool of opportunities, but you can't see them because you are disoriented. But when people are sober up, uh, then they can be able to see opportunities around them. Uh, one of the examples I normally use is uh, the case of uh, uh, Jesus with his disciples in the wilderness. Here they are in the wilderness uh, with uh, a big team, 5,000 and beyond. And uh, people are angry. They have been there for, for some days and they need to eat. And uh, when disciples went to Jesus, they asked him, these guys are angry. Should we send them to go and, and get some food in the, uh, in the village? But he told them, feed them, feed them. And I think that was a really shock. It was a shocking statement because we have come to report, we don't have food. And then they are told to feed, to feed them. And uh, I think one thing I like is that uh, he, he took control and he, he, sh he also, uh, he wanted them probably to think more because if someone tells, tells you to feed them and is your leader, probably there's something he knows which you do not know. And uh, I think that statement is really a, a, a very uh, important statement. Uh, what leaders do, you create an environment where people can be able to think soberly. And through thinking soberly, they start seeing even what they could not be able to see. And that's how they realize that there's a guy here with some bread and fish. And uh, it came from people, it didn't come from Jesus, it came from people. So people, they had something, but they couldn't be able to, to really see uh, what they have and in terms of the value that it can, it can bring. We are not, uh, we, we are not, uh, we are not in a monopoly of providing solution. Some of the solutions are with the people, but we need to create the environment uh, to help them, uh, give them hope until they're able to sober up, until they're able to really critically look at them and look around them and see what do they have. Because leaders, we are like coaches. We are like coaches. We, we, we just help you to tap into the potential that you have. Yeah, so uh, being, uh, a dealer of hope, very important. Uh -huh. Leaders instill in their people a hope for success and a belief in themselves. Positive leaders empower people to 
accomplish their goals. So let people have hope, hope for success, and a belief in themselves. People should believe in three things. One, they should be believe in the vision, they should believe in the leader, and they should also believe in themselves as they pursue the vision that you are pursuing together. That they matter and they have a role to play. Uh, number nine, leadership is grounded on strong character. I think when you were looking at the definition, this word came out a number of times from what you shared. And uh, this is a topic that we shall handle uh, as we as we get into level three, it's a topic on its own. But for now, I'll just go through a few, uh, a few definition or a few uh, aspects that have been echoed by other leaders. Character is a foundation stone upon which one must build to win respect. I said, uh, I think we, we, we talked about respect and we said respect, uh, it's earned, it's not given, it's earned. So just as no worthy building can be erected on a weak foundation, so no lasting reputation worthy of respect can be built on a weak character. That is R.C. Uh, Samsel. Yeah. So successful leadership is not about being tough or soft, sensitive or assertive, but about a set of attributes. First and foremost, that attribute is character. Uh, given a leader of, given two choices of a leader, either a leader of character or a leader of strategy, uh, going for the strategy, you have killed the two stones in one because it's about the strategy. Character is a strategy in its own. Yeah, so this is the foundation. And uh, no man can climb out beyond the limitation of his own character. We cannot climb beyond because it's a foundation. In the last analysis, what we are, what we are communicates far more eloquently than anything we say. Lifestyle. Remember I said lifestyle. This is Steve Covey. Talked about lifestyle. So good character is more to be praised than outstanding talent. Most talents are to some extent a gift. Good character by contrast is not given to us. We have to build piece by piece, by thought, choice, courage, and determination. That is John Luther. So talent is a gift that is given to us. But when it comes to character, we have to build it piece by piece. Yeah. So leadership is the capacity and will to rally, be, to rally men and women to a common purpose and the character which inspires confidence. Character that inspires confidence. You rally people for a common purpose and the character. So the respect that leadership must have require that one's ethics be without question. A leader not only stays above the line between right and wrong, he stays well, clear of the gray areas. G. Allen Barnett. So uh, very important when it comes to issues of uh, character. Uh, number 10, leadership role involves the vision, purpose, and communication. So these are crit uh, critical aspects also when it comes to leadership. Establishing clear vision and purpose. Remember the story of J.F. Kennedy and the janitor. Yeah, remember that story. They very clear. The janitor understood the big picture of the organization. And at the same time, he knew he had a purpose in the work that he was uh, involved in. So effectively, communicating the vision to trigger willingness, collab uh, collaboration, or support. Willingness. Very important. It is willingness. Influence comes from willingness. Uh, it's not the influencer. It's the influence that has the power to decide either to follow or not to follow. Developing platform for sharing the information, knowledge, skills, and expertise. Coordinating and balancing the conflicting interests of all members or stakeholders. So involves issues of purpose, vision, and how well we communicate. Now, from those definitions that we have looked at, there are some common elements that I just want to flash through. I know there are many, but I've just singled a few. And one of the critical 
uh, aspect when we are defining leadership is the issue of self-awareness and development. I cannot grow or develop what I don't know. So it starts with what do I have? What do I know about myself? And then I build on that, uh, that foundation. And uh, it's through building that that I am able to stand out and become influential. So self-awareness, two is influence. And the influence, very important, is through inspiration, not manipulation. Because you, people influence differently. But uh, we influence through inspiration on all positive aspects that are for the well-being of the people. And uh, a leader inspires uh, through passionate commitment to a vision and a purpose. I think that is also very critical. And effective communi communication is very important in triggering willingness, collaboration, or support. And uh, another element is deployment. Deploy people's potential, gifts, and potential. And the leadership is founded on strong character. So these are some of the common elements that are coming out. Deploying uh, character, communication, vision, purpose, uh, passionate passion, inspiration, self-awareness, uh, and uh, through this, you, you can see the, the very different dimension that people have looked at leadership from. And uh, that's why even now, if you go to Google, you'll find millions of uh, definitions of leadership or hundreds of, of thousands. There are many, many. And then people are still studying this topic day in, day out. So, and I think uh, the more we study, I think we are making it more simpler. We, we really want to personalize it. Uh, we really want to bring it to the level where it's not too complicated, but it's too practical and, and it makes sense to what we are talking about. So uh, I'll conclude this topic by looking at maybe some of this, the, 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 the stepping stones. How do you graduate from one level to another as you build your leadership? And the first aspect is connect to the purpose in life. And this is this comes or connects to the issue of self-awareness. Then number two, uh, you're able to conceive a purpose and realize your significance. You're important. Unless, until I feel I'm important and I have a place to play, then I may not be able to rise up. Yeah, there are people who have, they have, uh, they, they have, uh, uh, they, 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 they have given up in life. They, they have deleted themselves. The value has gone down. And such people cannot be able to make a, a significant change or they, can, they may not even be able to make a change. So it starts by, I'm here for a purpose and I am important, I am valuable and I have a place. Then that thinking alone triggers uh, one to rise and, uh, and to want to position themselves to be able to serve, yeah? So uh, the other issue, sorry, I've gone back. Then uh, thirdly, uh, a leader captures a vision, self-awareness, connecting to purpose, realizing you are significant. Then you are able to connect to a vision. You conceive a vision, a focused, uh, focused future. Then that vision ignites the passion. Someone who was, uh, who was uh, dead in quotes, someone who had, was just flowing in life, rises up. And you start seeing someone who is so, uh, so zealous, someone who is so focused, determined, and, and, and passion comes up. I always say passion is the fuel of life. The moment passion dies, it doesn't matter how much you're doing, you will always be dragging yourself. I, I use example of a car. If a car does not have fuel, it can move, yes, but with a lot of effort. And you require so many people to push it. But a car with the fuel, ah, just, just uh, press a bit and it moves. Yeah? So when our passion is dead in us, then we become like, uh, we, 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 we are, we, we, it becomes very hard to move on in life. Yeah, there are people who have read stories of people who, have, who even died at their workplace because I'm there, but my passion is dead. Yes, I'm working, I'm feeling like 
But when you ask me that secret success, that ka sound, that ka voice, the inner voice, it will be telling me, my friend, you're struggling. But the issue is passion. And I think I can testify to this. From the moment I started doing these issues of leadership, uh, my life ignited in another way. As much as I work in an office, but when I'm doing this, uh, I can do it overnight and I'll be happy. I'll be glad to do this. I'll do it anytime for free, for pay, it doesn't matter. This is me. <laughs> so, uh, and, and life becomes alive again. You feel you're ignited. And I think that is how life should be lived. Yeah, that's how life should be lived. There should be that thing that wakes you up in the night, uh, just gives you the motivation. When you do it, uh, you, you really feel that I am in my thing. Uh, let me use that word. Yeah, so it uh, ignites passion. And then finally, a leader inspire others. Because of what? You are already passionate. You are already focused. You are already convicted that you are important. You now start selling this to other people. Start, telling, start uh, seeing also the same thing in others. Because if I don't see this value in me, I don't see myself valuable, then uh, probably I won't see uh, the value in others. Yeah, so I value myself and then I'm able to see uh, uh, and I'm able to uh, I'm able to pass the same. Yeah, there is there is some I become contentious, so I'm able to pass the same. So the ability to inspire, motivate people, influence them to be able to follow. And uh, as I conclude, I felt I need to mention. I think sorry, I have not taken you through the manual. Uh, I think I some of this topic they carry us away, uh, but I'll tell you where the uh, the answers are. I felt I, I need to add something to do with the transformational leadership because this is really important to us uh, as leaders. Uh, just even if I don't go deep, this one slide only, just to give you a picture of who is a transformational leader because this is really what we are talking about. This is really what we are. We are transformational leaders, purpose-driven transformational leaders. Yeah, who are looking at the global, leading where we are, but transforming the impact. So who is a transformational leader? Is, or how do we define transformational leadership? Is the leader's ability to move followers beyond their immediate self-interest. Immediate self-interest. You're able to move people. You're able to move people from Egypt. Their self-interest, their, their, maybe their, their, their small view of where they are. Yeah? They are comfort in their discomfort. And you're able to start showing them the bigger picture. Yeah? And how do you do this? You do this through idealized influence. That is purpose. That is purpose. Purpose-driven. Becoming a role model. Walking the talk. So that is the idealized influence. In other words, we're talking about charisma. And this comes with purpose. You know, a person of purpose is very, is charming. Is, 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 is someone that when he speaks, uh, you, see the, you see the energy. He's able to emit energy. You also idealize influence, uh, transformational leadership. You're talking issues of inspirational or inspiring, inspirational motivation inspiring, inspiring others, uh, as we have repeated many times. And then individualized consideration. Yeah, you're people driven, genuine concerns for the needs of, of people. Yeah, uh, there, are, there, are, there, there are three things I normally like uh, conveying to leaders, which are very important. And I tell leaders, be very passionate very passionate probably with your vision but at the same time be very compassionate with the people that you are leading and because uh, i also took this from the example of, of of the bible jesus was very passionate he was walking all over walking long distances fulfilling his mission but at the same time he was very compassionate if he met the needy if he met the sick 
he was able to relate with them. He was able to relate. Yeah, so we should balance that so that we are not so passionate, uh, forget that we are working with the people. Yeah, especially when we are dealing with vision and projects, it's very important to balance that, uh, those two. And then intellectual stimulation, the issues of being innovative, the issues of being creative, challenge people to be innovative and creative. So transformational leaders are influential, they are uh, charismatic, they are confident, they are intelligent, self-driven, and insightful. So I think this is us. I doubt if there is a definition that is too far away from who we are as leaders, or is too far away from our reach. I guess I'm right. So if you are talking about transformational leaders, leadership, this is what we are talking about. And uh, I can evaluate myself and see where am I and how do I upscale? How do I grow to that uh, leader or to be able to meet this criteria of a transformational leader? The last one is strategic leadership. Just one slide on strategic leadership. You see, we looking at uh, this, uh, this pyramid or this triangle, at the base, we normally have the operational team. Then we have the tactical team or the technical team. At the peak, we have the strategic team or the strategic leadership or strategic leaders who focus on policy. And uh, I think it's important just to have a, a glimpse on strategic leadership, which is defined as the ability of the top, top level managers or leaders or executive to determine the future courses of action. This is vision and direction of the firm and motivate the members to make efforts in that direction. So there are some, some uh, aspects here about uh, strategic leadership. Providing direction, purpose, vision, getting strategy and policy right, uh, organize, reorganize the people, release the corporate spirit, let the organization to wider their issues of collaboration, their issues of networking, there are issues of synergy, there are issues of stakeholders, and then develop today and tomorrow's leaders. Yeah, they think about succession planning. They think about the long-term view. So uh, that uh, I felt is important just to, because we are, we are leaders and it's good to have a glance of these aspects. Now, our leadership challenge, uh, in this lesson, we have identified some common elements in the definition of leadership. Identify elements you require to advance. As you continue, continuously improve your skills and knowledge, you experience personal growth and transformation. So when I was starting, I said, uh, just have your notebook ready. Uh, please jot down where you feel there are gaps. Uh, where you feel you need to enhance yourself more, where you feel you need to uh, probably to pay more attention yeah, in terms of improving your leadership skills. So let me pause there for maybe two minutes. Uh, I will request uh, Reverend Kahindi just to check if there are some comments or Reverend Beth, one of them. Uh, and then uh, we'll be able to continue with the, with the other session. Thank you. Reverend Beth, are you there? Okay, okay. As we wait for, ah, okay. Then uh, take it on, take it on. Okay, I'm just trying to see the. Uh, there are comments that were made. But maybe in that one minute that is remaining, uh, that the Joseph is coming back, maybe somebody can tell us one quote that he has he is leaving here with after this lesson as we could proceed to the next lesson. Yeah, Kelvin. He says passion comes from. Uh, let me see it nicely comes from 
a clear vision. He says he loves that, having a clear vision. Someone else? Um, something that you can say, this one thing I'm living here with. A quote. I can, maybe I can tell you my, this. Oh. Go ahead. So just say it, Reverend. Okay, somebody has written, but this one was uh, directed, not everybody, but it says, my take home today is that leadership should be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yes, that's it. Mm. Wherever you are, you're a leader. You're not a leader because um, I'm with the congregation or because I'm in the organization and everybody can see me, then that is the time I'm a leader. It should be a lifestyle. Even at home, even as you lead your family, if they are fathers, if you're a mother, you're a leader there. You're a sister, you have your siblings and others, whether they are, if they are older than you or younger than you, you're a leader. Wherever you are, at Akwamatatu, you are a leader. The way you behave even with the Makangas and everything, you always remember, I am a leader. I don't argue, start arguing with the Makangas in the Matatu. I am a leader. It is my lifestyle. So I don't know whether Joseph is up. Oh, there's Chege come out to Chege come out and say magic. Jari Kuzisoma. Okay, as we let our own. Hmm? Lights. Is that lives or what? Okay, lights, lights shine. We, are con we unconsciously give others permission to do the same as we let, light, let our lights to shine. And if a man, okay, there's Collins says, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, I love this also. Then he should do that till the heaven and the earth recognize that they are even the man who swept like no other. As in, they will know that Collins lived here. That Reverend was once here. You who is listening in this class. Self-awareness is very important because I, when I know who I am, I will lead someone else to have self-awareness. It is vital, according to Penina, self-awareness is vital in, yeah, Knowing who you are. Before you know who you are, then how will you tell others what they ought to be? Uh, I guess Joseph now is ready. We give him back. And also the issue of character. The longevity, we say that the longevity of your, of your position, of who you are, is determined by your character. So, yeah. And then... A leader is a dealer in hope. Yes, as Jesus did. He didn't produce the, the loaf and the fish. And they, they definitely knew how to do it. So, can we give it back, Rev? Can we give it back to, to Joseph because of time? Joseph, we are ready back to you. Okay, thank you, Reverend uh, Beth and uh, Reverend Kahindi. Uh, funny enough, I think time, I don't know if we skipped some minutes. I think time has gone so fast. But I just want to handle a few slides. Probably maybe for today, we will not go for the, the breakout. Uh, we are starting level three. And uh, these are quite heavy lessons. They, quite, they have quite a lot. I'll handle just a few slides on the power of vision in leadership, and then we'll be able to proceed. I had prepared up to a certain level. So I just want us to go through a few of them. Uh, as we do this, as you have done on the chat, please do that, continue sharing, so that uh, immediately I'm through, we just look at the charts and then we'll be able to conclude. So the power of vision in leadership, uh, we are connecting to the definitions. So we are now moving on. Vision was very key. It is one of the uh, 
uh, one of the elements that kept on uh, repeating itself in various definitions. And therefore, this stands out as one of the key quality of leadership. One of the key quality of leadership. Uh, let me start with this uh, story, a, a very short story. The story of three bricklayers. I don't know who has ever heard this story of three bricklayers. And uh, it's a parable about the power of vision and purpose. So there were three uh, bricklayers, three bricklayers. And as they were doing their work, someone came, out, came uh, someone passed by and he asked them, the three of them, each, each one of them separately, what they were doing. Yeah? They are there working, laying bricks, and someone comes and asks you or asks the person who is doing the work, what are you doing here? Uh, you can connect this still with uh, JFK and, and the janitor. So how did they respond? Let's look at their responses. These are three bricklayers, same question. How did they respond? The first one, the first one said, I am a brick layer. I am working hard laying bricks to feed my family. It is true. The second one, I am a builder. I am building a wall. Uh -huh. The last one, I am a cathedral builder. I am building a great cathedral to the Almighty. What do you see in those responses? Same question, same work, but the responses reveal so much. And uh, I think even if I'm just to apply this at where I am, probably where I work, if we can ask this same question with the same people in the same organizations, you will, you probably there might be some res, uh, resemblance in terms of the responses. There are people who are there uh, working to get bread for the family. Others, I'm just a builder and I'm building. But others are seeing the picture. They are seeing the picture. It's not just the earning the bread. It's not just being a builder. It's a cathedral. And I'm building a cathedral to the Almighty. This guy must be inspired. Yeah. And uh, I think even the, in terms of performance, there, there, there is a difference. There is a difference. Because what I see determines how much I'm able to put into what I'm doing. So we, we just want to focus on uh, this uh, topic of uh, the power of vision because it's very critical, very, very important. And uh, what is vision? I've picked a few, uh, a few definitions, just short ones. It's the desired end state. What is the desired end state? There are times we live life in reverse. I go to the end and then I come back, or I look at the end and then I, I get back. And, and then I'm able to align myself towards that, that direction. What will be, what is the desired end? Uh, two, two, uh, two, we are talking about the end in mind. What is the end in my mind? Uh -huh. Being able to see the end results and how your work contributes to that end. I see the end results and how I'm able to connect with what I'm doing currently. A future that informs and energizes the present. Very important, energizes. We said that a, a vision brings hope, it ignites hope, it tells people this is not where we are ending. This is, this is, we are passing by, but there is a beautiful future. Yeah, we left e uh, Egypt, we are in the wilderness, but we are going to a land of milk and honey and it's our own. So it's able to energize the people to keep on uh, moving. So clear, strong, and inspirational, long-term desired change. Yeah? Mental picture of the results you want to achieve. Very important. Remember that word, results you want to achieve. 
So even what you are seeing uh, has to be in terms of what you are seeing, the results, the end results. Uh, I'm saying that because there are times people define uh, vision, but uh, if you look at it, it's not really, it does not really uh, fall in, in uh, definitions of a, a vision. Maybe it can be a mission, but they term it as, as a vision. Uh, a picture of the future that influences all decisions. Yeah, so the moment you align yourself to vision or you capture a vision, then it influences your life, influences the decisions, it influences your family, your spiritual, your physical well being, your resources, your relationship. I like using the example of uh, Mary when she, she got pregnant, she knew who to connect with. Uh, she connected with Elizabeth, who was also pregnant. So we are, we are in this together. Yeah, you are pregnant, I'm pregnant. We are carrying something, you are carrying something. We can be able to work together. We can be able to help each other. So when you capture a vision, then it tells you who is important uh, in terms of who to relate with. Some examples of vision, just to give you a picture. Uh, Oxfam, a just world without poverty. A just world without poverty. Can we be able to visualize that? Yeah, I think we can visualize that. Uh, Facebook talks about connect with friends and the world around you on Facebook. I think that you can be able to see that. Uh -huh. uh, Feeding America is another company. Talks about a hunger-free America. Want to see a hunger-free America? That's a vision. Microsoft talks about a computer in every desk, in every home. Can we visualize that? Um, I think it's possible to visualize that and it's happening. Again, we have a, a human rights campaign, equality for everyone. Uh, equality for everyone. And then we have a habitat for humanity, a world where everyone has a decent place to to live, yeah? So I'm just trying to help us just to see, are these statements statements that we can visualize? It's the desired end results. So I should be able to see. I gave you an example of uh, the, the, uh, the founder of Starbucks, uh, Starbucks coffee shop. And he was saying he could visualize a, a world where people are walking with cups of coffee in the street. Like I'm seeing that, I'm seeing that, and we are working towards that. So it's about what am I seeing? And it's inspired. You're inspired and you're able to see that future. Yeah. So these are just some of the examples. I looked also at the cathedral, uh, All Saints Cathedral. Uh, They're talking about a Christ-centered cathedral. But my favorite, the land of milk and honey. I like this because I can see it very clear. Yeah. So uh, it's important to be able to uh, to define and uh, understand clearly when we are talking about vision, so that we don't mix the two, especially when we we are, we are defining it. And I think uh, we talked about the vision, and we see where it falls in. Uh, in most of the definition, vision came out very clearly. Now, uh, vision encompasses thinking, planning the future with a lot of imaginations. A lot of hindsight. Sometimes you have to look back, uh, have details or analysis, get deeper insight uh, into what you want to uh, achieve or what you want to fulfill. And then foresight, you're able to look far, far much ahead. So look at where we have come from. It's like Joshua. I look from where we have come from. I look at the details of where we are. And then I look at where I'm going. And then you're able to focus uh, clearly on the direction that you want to take. So vision sets a leader free from the limitation of what the eyes can see. And it allows you as a leader to enter into the liberty of what the heart can conceive. For, for a vision, it's not about the sight, but it's about what the heart can see, what you can be able to imagine, what you can conceive. I can see uh, that, uh, that, that, that land. Uh, flowing with milk and honey. I can, as you're able to see and see it, not in the physical, but in the power of the, of the imagination and power of the mind and power of the 
the heart, power of the spirit. So vision is a leader's radar and compass. The only way you can keep on track of your leadership, it's when you have a vision that keeps you the direction, keeps on guiding you. It's able to tell you this is your direction. It's the radar and the compass. It keeps on telling you how you need to, to move. So it's the heart of leadership. And uh, vision leads the leader. So you are the leader, but when you capture the vision, then it starts, it gives you the direction. It becomes your leader. Yeah, vision becomes your leader. Every leader is led. And one way that you are led is through the, the vision that you have captured. It paints the target and the direction. Sparks passion, it's the magnet. We say that true leaders do not look for followers. They attract them. They attract them. So uh, it becomes like your magnet. It induces self-discipline until you become like a magnet. People want to walk with you and attracts people towards you. The source of hope and passion in life. A leader without a vision is a tragedy. A leader without a vision is a tragedy. And uh, I think the world is really facing a lot of challenges because of this. Our organizations are facing challenges because of this. Our families are facing challenges because of this. Because a leader without a vision is a tragedy. Such a leader have no foresight and instills no hope in themselves and others. Yeah, I, I think this is really important. Uh, we talked about where there's no vision, people perish. Where there's no vision, people run wild. And uh, we are seeing homes, we are seeing families, we are seeing organizations, we are seeing governments running wild because we don't know where we are going. Yeah, so uh, all that we can engage in are personal issues. They are not vision-directed issues. Uh, I, and uh, I'm really touched by this. Uh, I really feel that uh, this is a discussion that, uh, please take it up, take it up wherever you are and share it out. Uh, if you can help one person capture a vision and direct the family, you have done well, you have done well. You have solved a problem, a crisis. Probably the children will have fallen in the same crisis. So uh, I'm really, really touched by this. And uh, I just pray that this will be, uh, we, we will be able to bring change in us and change around us. If all of us can do something where we are on this, uh, we can be able to make a difference and a much, much bigger difference because we are in a tragedy because of this. Our country is in a tragedy because of this. Yes, we were given vision 2030, but it's, it's no longer the, 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 the drive. There are so many other things that have come up. So vision is very, very critical. And when we lose it, uh, then we become wild. Yeah, so uh, I think I will not talk so much about this because it's there in the manual. Uh, when you're defining your vision, just some terms that you need to focus on, uh, like vision statement, just have the big picture mission statement, how the vision will be achieved, uh, purpose, why the vision is important, goals, what needs to be accomplished, and then set the objectives which provides milestone with specific timelines, strategies, what are the methods or what are the ways, what are the approaches, and then action plans, the, uh, the specific actions that, and activities that requires to be done, and core values, what you stand for. Uh, what are the principles that you stand for uh, as you pursue your vision? And uh, when you're setting your objectives, they should be measurable, they should be suitable, they should be feasible, they should be, uh, they should be commitment and ownership. Yeah. So I think this one is in the manual, you can uh, look at it. But I just want to conclude this by uh, briefly talking about something that I think uh, forms a very thin line between vision and ambition. Yeah, so that we are able to know, am I pursuing a vision or am I just working within the confinement of ambition? Both of these terms are very important, but uh, it's good to distinguish, distinguish them for clarity and also for an understanding of ourselves. So ambition is the stack, the degree, 
or the desire inside you to achieve something. But it's very important that it's connected to a bigger, uh, a bigger, uh, a bigger mission than uh, just a personal. Okay? So vision has to be that something or higher for a visionary leader. Yes, you can be ambitious, but it has to be connected to a bigger vision. So ambition, strong desire to do or achieve something, vision, the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination as we have talked about or with wisdom. So there are, there, there are leaders who, who, who stops probably at one, one side without really co connecting the two. I can be very ambitious uh, on my personal, on my personal issues, on my personal uh, aspects, but I need to connect that with a bigger picture. So let me just give you a difference between uh, an um, ambition-driven leader and vision-driven leader, and then we'll conclude at this. So ambition-driven leader can be driven by self-centered desire, working for your own glory and for self, gratification. It's about myself. But a purpose-driven leader, a purpose, a vision-driven leader, sorry, a vision-driven leader driven by a purpose for the good of mankind. It's about humanity. It's not about me. Uh, Ambition-driven leader can be limited to the sense, to the sense or ability of sight. But on the other side, vision-driven leader driven by the sense or ability of the heart or imagination. Ambition can be driven by competitive mindset. Yeah, competition, desire to distinguish oneself from the other. But on the other side, uh, vision-driven leader, they are driven by complementary mindset, desire to improve mankind and contribute to society, society's well-being. Ambition can be inclined to naturalism, the world, nothing supernatural. It's about the natural view. It's about what I can see and, uh, and, and me as a person. There is nothing uh, divine in what I'm doing. But for a vision-driven leader, driven by faith or divine guidance, there is some element of supernatural view. Uh, they are able to think beyond just this life, beyond and beyond. So uh, ambition-driven leader can be driven by excessive desire for distinction, uh, preference, honor, superiority, political power, popularity, or fame. But a vision-driven leader is driven by desire for significance, value, legacy, and impact. Ambition-driven leader can, uh, they can, can be measured. They measure by their success by personal achievement. But for vision driven, it's by impact, by legacy, by fulfillment, by transformation, by the change that we are bringing in the lives of people. Ambition driven leader can be self focused or centered, intrinsically driven in terms of possession, can abuse or even devalue people or use people, can be superficial, driven by complexity and pretense. But on the other side, uh, vision-driven leaders, they are focused, they are intrinsically driven. It's, it's an inner fulfillment. Yeah, it's an inner fulfillment. It's a, a higher call. It's a call, actually. They, they are servanthood and they value humanity. They work for humanity, the well-being of humanity. They are genuine and they're driven by simplicity. One of the statements that really uh, uh, set me free is the realization that when you capture a vision, your life is simplified. You simplify life. You start living for this one thing. You are focused on what you are doing and life becomes all about that vision that you are pursuing. So driven by simplicity and authenticity. So uh, I wish to stop there. I wish to stop there for today. Uh, this In this level three, uh, we're going to talk a lot of uh, very touching issues, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to pick up and uh, we'll be able to experience the transformation that we are talking about. Uh, our prayers are always that this knowledge will not just be in our heads, but it will drop into our hearts. It will drop into our hearts. 
to drop into our spirits so that we can experience that uh, inner transformation that will really distinguish the work that we do, the purpose for why we lead, the, the, the motivation for why we lead, and even the, the excellency on how we do the work. We can be like that uh, third bricklayer who is able to see the cathedral, who is able to see the bigger picture in the daily or the small activities that we are engaged in. I will pick up from here uh, uh, next Thursday. I'll finish this topic. These topics are quite uh, quite long. The, the 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 six the six topics that are remaining. We have we've done very well. They are quite long, but we'll uh, really manage them as we continue. So thank you so much. Uh, I plead with you. Please do not miss a session. Do not miss a session, because uh, this is where now the heart of everything is. Do not miss a session. Do not miss to do your review. Let's give it the final push. Let's finish well. Thank you so much. God bless you. I return back to Reverend Beth to conclude. Thank you very much, Joseph. And I pray that um, one thing I would like, I believe there's that one thing that you'll take home with you. One thing, if not two, most likely maybe two, but at least one thing to go home with. As in, I know you are at home, but there's always the way they say, I take home, all right? Um, but also I would wish from your manuals, you'd go back to your manuals and read, and read about the ambitious, Mm, the ambition and the visions driven leader mm -hmm. these two because the line sometimes is so thin to tell which is which the line is very thin I would like you to go back sometimes you are so ambitious to do something actually see vision to tell the truth it wasn't your vision it was not within you you are just ambitious to do something, but actually it was not part of you. I would wish after this in your time before the next class, just read through the notes. Even when, I, when I'm being taught, to, when we are, I'm feeling like, hmm, was I in class last time, you know? And yet it is like, I'm listening it again and again, and yet it feels so new, so fresh. So please go back, go back to your notes, read it again and again. But there were some of the chat, there are some things that were written here. I'm not keeping you for so long, I'm sorry, but there's something that uh, Peter wrote, Kyoko, a leader without a vision is a tragedy for sure. That's a tragedy. Ask not what my country company do for me, but what I can do for my country. That is Nelson and then Penina. Vision is a leader's compass, exactly. So there's something I had seen in the earlier lesson about, about, did I say it next time? You may put there, Mwai Kibaki. I saw that one and I said I'll mention it again. I know you, you are there, of course, but allow me just to read it. Leadership is a privilege be, uh, to better the lives of others. It is not an opportunity to satisfy personal greed. Please, I wish I would just take a microphone. Nyende KBC, KTN citizen, I say this to everyone in this nation. I, if there was, it was a microphone, I would give now to, I hand the microphone now to Reverend Kaindi. He's pointing at me. He's just imagining what I meant, yeah. But, but I feel like I would just take a microphone, Nyende Pale citizen. And I read this quote of uh, former president. Kibaki. Yes. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it has been a great session. We have packed a lot. And as Reverend Beth is saying, uh, we have a lot of take home, even though we are at home. Uh, Kevin had written, my take home is that when you capture a vision, life is simplified. I think I, I, I like that conclusion. When you capture a vision, life is simplified. 
There is no beating about the bush. You just hit the head on the nail. That's from Kevin, one of us. When you capture vision, life is simplified. Thank you very much, Chairman. And I thank you all of you for having made the time to be here. Uh, people from diaspora, uh, there is Anna all the way from Obamaland, Penina, from uh, Trukana, who was braved in the, um, the, the, the floods or uh, overflow of Trukana. And uh, our colleague from Rwanda, and all of you who are spread all over in, uh, in uh, uh, Kenya. I see Peter, a man of Mutwapa, but I'm told he's around. The skier roof is around. So if he stays around for the weekend, there is soup on, Saturday, on Sunday. In fact, let me make that announcement. On Sunday, we are having soup at our usual place for those of you who know. Okay? Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here. Let's just do this. Read our books. Let's review the lessons. Let's look and watch again um, what is recorded here. And above all, let us just pick that one thing that this, month, this week we can change in our lives. We have been leaders, we are having areas that we are functioning on, and let's just learn one thing and that we put into practice. That way we shall better ourselves. We might have learned about 50 things, but if you can only practice one, every other week you add one, then you will be improving on and on. So thank you very much, all of you. Uh, I'm looking for somebody who can conclude with us, to offer us with a word of prayer. And Metauliza uh, Mze Peter Njau. Mze Peter Njau, please uh, pray for us as we conclude. Peter, unmute, we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, I'm a mute tenor. Unmute again. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. So it was a very good interaction. And I have heard something that is very strong. A reader without a vision is a strategy. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, the day you are adding understanding and knowledge to ourselves, O Lord. We are here to better the lives of people for the coming generation. We feel we have to impact them, inspire them, so that they will be better readers, O Lord. You know the foundation of our hearts and where we are going, O Lord. We pray for global readership to continue and we will inspire many. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and believe. Thank you. Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. You can unmute and tell us good night. And uh, good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See you. Eh, eh, eh.